Before you watch this video, make sure that you already know how to solve the Rubik's Cube using the Friedrich method or the cross method where you first solve the top side of the cross. Um, now in this video I'll show you some algorithms that are simply shortcut algorithms or um, mirror algorithms like instead of rotating corners counterclockwise I'll show you how to rotate them clockwise. Um, probably going to be about three or four new algorithms in this video. It should be able to shorten your time by about 30 seconds or so. Uh, with all these algorithms I'd be doing like two minute solves. So. Hopefully this will be of some help to you. This is probably my last video for the summer because I'm going up to Lake George. Um, but I hope to do some more juggling videos in the fall. Anyway, um, let's see. Let me get this cube good scramble. Okay. There aren't really any algorithms for the first part, the green cross. So, basically you're just going to skip that whole section, there's nothing else you need to know, because it's mostly just logic, really. Okay, uh, top face. For the edges, you, al you should already know the mirror algorithms, like for example, here we have a piece I'm deciding enough to use a mirror instead of if the edge were on here and I'm trying to get it over here this edge needs to go down there so that's mirrored algorithm you should already know oh wait I just forgot something let me see if I can fix that uh, there is a shortcut here actually. It's not even an algorithm, it's just a shortcut. Um, this is something I've known about for a while, but it took me a while to break my habit. Now, say you just finished an algorithm, and this will only chop off like half a second of your time, but it adds up. So, say you have an edge to do here, and you just completed another edge algorithm, and you notice that the edge is over there. Now, normally, uh, let me see if I get the right view. There we go. Here's the edge over here. Normally, you might turn it back, then turn it away and start the algorithm. Um, you may have noticed that this is wrong. It's obviously wrong. You've got the edge over there. You already did the first move to the algorithm. So, yeah, get a better view. So here's the edge. You need to go down here. Instead of just you know turning over here and then turning it back, it's already turned back. So then you just continue the algorithm. Um, sometimes you already have the first turn of an algorithm completed. You know, it saves you one turn, uh, and that's something. So I'll now show you a shortcut algorithm for the blue cross, but I'm not really at the right situation for it yet. Okay, say you come to the V formation. I'm sure everyone's seen this uh, quite a few times. You can use the following algorithm, looking at it from this view, so you've got the V in the back. You can use the following shortcut algorithm um, to prevent, you know, normally you do fru re re fee or whatever you want to call it, twice to get the blue cross. You don't need to do that using the following algorithm. So that'll probably chop off a second or two a few times. Uh, might just seem like some neat shortcut algorithm, but in reality, it's the regular blue cost blue cross permutation algorithm backwards. Like here's the regular one and it got you to the V stage. So simply by doing that backwards that's what you're really doing. It gets blue cross. Saved me a lot of time. Um, now let's see I'm not sure yeah okay uh, you should not know the mirror algorithm for placing the edges of the cross. Um, let's see, that's not really the right situation. Okay, here we go. Normally, you would rotate the edges counterclockwise, but in this case, see you got this orange edge. Here's the correct edge. Orange edge is over here, and it needs to go across this way, clockwise you probably don't know that algorithm and it's just the same thing as the regular cross placement algorithm 
except on the other side. I'll give you the algorithm now. So to perform that algorithm, uh, hold on, let me undo what I just did. Okay, to perform that algorithm, what you want to do is have the correct edge on the right face, meaning you would sort of look at the cube like this. So here's your one correct edge. The other edges need to rotate clockwise. Now I know that is all you need to do is find one edge. At this point, you should have one of the edges in the right correct spot. Um, find one edge, like here's one, blue orange, needs to go this way, meaning that the whole thing needs to go counterclockwise. Um, now this makes it so that you avoid the situation where you do one move twice in a row. Uh, you can just skip that step entirely. So now I'll use the algorithm. Bottom is still intact, of course, and then we have all the edges placed. So the next step is placing the corners, and uh, right now I'm at the perfect situation. Just like the cross, instead of doing the regular corner permutation algorithm where the corners rotate counterclockwise, this one rotates them clockwise. All you need to do is find one corner, here's one, orange yellow needs to go that way, therefore the whole thing is going clockwise. Um, once again, you don't have to do the algorithm, the other algorithm, twice. Chops off a second or two. Here's the algorithm for that. So, here's your one correct corner. All the others need to rotate clockwise. Um, instead of having this corner on the front, I actually turn and said this corner here is front. This would be front. This would be right. Now, let's just perform that algorithm. all of your corners are permuted or placed. Um, unfortunately, I don't know any shortcuts for um, placing the corners. I mean, I do, but there are some 20 move algorithms where like from the, from the stage you can turn all the corners, but I'm not gonna... I didn't bother to memorize those and I don't think anyone else should have to either. So just use your regular RIDI formula. But before I get into that, with that last corner algorithm, uh, it's actually a lot easier to memorize than you would think. I mean, I'm sure at this stage you can memorize it in like a couple of minutes, but in the other corner algorithm, you turned, let's see, U, then R. Then you did UI, LI. In this one, it's the same thing, except you do UI, LI first. UI, LI, then U, R. And same goes for the second half of the algorithm. Just had to point that out. So, once you're at this stage, all you can really do is just solve the corners the old-fashioned way. So, there's your solve cube. Um, I can solve my cube in about a minute. Using these algorithms, I'm sure you can too. Um, one thing though, if you're looking around online and you see an algorithm that doesn't quite work, or you're not sure what exactly it's supposed to do, sometimes someone says, you know, switch two corners, you do this algorithm, and it doesn't seem to work out, just solve your cube, perform the algorithm, and see what it messes up. Of course, there is no algorithm to switch two corners without messing the edges up, that would be impossible, but anyway, if you look around and see an algorithm like that, just solve your cube, try it from there. I hope this was a hopeful video for you.